Hey guys, Skylar here. Welcome to a video I didn't think I would ever make. It's a car video, first off. Um, as you probably read by the title, I have a Bronco Sport now. It is the Outer Banks model, uh, which is like just under the top tier of the sports model. The top tier is the Badlands, but like honestly, I didn't need the extra bit the Badlands has by default because I'm not an off-roader, so I don't really need like the extra safety things for off-roading or like the extra storage or like the extra giant outlet in the back so I can go camping with it and, I don't know, plug a microwave in or something. So I'm probably not in the best location to film. I'm literally in the car because it I mean, makes sense, but I'm on the side of a lake, like right, literally. I'm on the side of a lake. <laughs> I do have an ND filter on, so you can kind of see, but not the greatest. If I turned it up, it'd probably be better. Um, but yeah, Ooh, I'm gonna fix my selfie. I just figured I would film this in the car because then I can show you some of the stuff that I'm kind of talking about somewhat. So I have some B-roll to show in, show in, throw in, whatever. Um, because I'm not like this car person. I don't know anything really about cars. So this is gonna be more of just like an average person's like pros and cons, I guess, for this. So I upgraded from a 2015 Honda CRV EX, which was just like one above the base model for that year. And uh, the only real special feature that I had was like heated seats and like Bluetooth connectivity. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, this has, uh, well, let me show you. I have B-roll, but I'll show you it myself. So we have two-tone leather seats that are, it's like, I think it's called like ebony roast is the color. So we have a brown or tannish color, and then we have black perforated leather. And then we have this like gray cloth, this like easy, clean gray cloth. So we do have that. Oh, it's getting real sunny. I might have to put, hold on, let me like, can we like up the ND here? There we go. That looks a little better. I don't know how much to up it, so bear with me here. There we go. But yes, yeah, so we have that. It looks really nice. It feels amazing. The preferred letter, um, as well as the cloth, does get warmed up. This that I've noticed when the seat heaters are on, which is great. So they are heated. They're very easy to clean. I've already wiped them out once. This back to me. This might be too dark now, so hold on. I don't know which way this... Okay. We're going to get this right. Let me go back to minimum. There we go. I'm like trying to make this too dark, but also not make it too bright because like my hands overexposed in the sun. So I don't know. Um, but I love these seats. They're amazing. They have pockets galore. So they have a side pouch, which you can kind of see probably right here. And then they have a zipper pouch in the back. I did take some B-roll of that, so I could probably like shove it in there. But they do have a zipper pouch, which is awesome. So you can store quite a lot of stuff in there. Um. The steering wheel is pretty typical. It's just like all the audio controls and whatnot. So nothing super special. Literally just all the typical audio controls. Um, typical things here too. The dash is quite nice. It has some analog stuff. So like obviously your RPM and your uh, speed. It also has electronic speed, which is really nice digital, I guess you could say. I love that. The thing it's been hard to adjust to is it does have a shifter. I. I want to call it a knob, a shifter knob, opposed to like, you know, the lever or gear. I don't have a, I don't have a typical prindle. I don't have a shifter prindle. I have a circular, circular prindle boy. I don't, I don't know how to talk about this. Like, I just genuinely like this vehicle. Um, it is the shadow black color, but it does have like this, like kind of brown gold shift to it when it's in like really bright light. So it doesn't look black in direct sunlight. I would get out and show you, um, but there's like so many people around and I don't feel like being the awkward person with camera because where I live, YouTubers aren't much of a thing. So it would be a little weird for me, just like an awkward mental mentality thought process. So it kind of, I don't know. Let's just talk about the car itself. So I am leasing it, which is both good and bad. I've never leased a car before, so it's good in that my desire to be materialistic as hell is very easy to handle because in three years I can bring it back, lease a new car if I want to, or buy it outright. Um, impressions though, I think that's kind of an important thing. After driving it for a week, because I've had it for literally a week, I would say 
driving it has been wonderful. It drives really smoothly, braking, shifting. Um, like with the knob, you think you'd probably, it might be a little weird, but after doing a bit, you do have the sensor up here or the coating up here. So you can see, you know, where you are without looking down. So it's not like it's difficult, but I will say where it's in the same order as it normally would be with a regular Prindle. I know it's not called a Prindle, it's gear shift, but I'm calling it a Prindle because why not? It's not hard to figure out because it's clicks. You can hear it click when you turn it. So if I want to go to drive, that's three clicks over. So I can do it without looking, which is great. Um, what else? What else is good? Oh, Apple CarPlay is wonderful. That's, you know, not like a specialty to this car, obviously. CarPlay's been out for a good bit of years now at this point. Like what, four, four or so years it's been out? Five for some vehicles, like the testers. Um, so I, I've been enjoying that to have all those features because in my CRV, I just had regular Bluetooth and that's it. So I had to deal with, hold on, I actually still have it using a car mount, like a vent mount to put my phone on to use everything, which I did not like because it does weaken your car vents, which is really annoying because, ugh. Which, funny enough, the dealership didn't notice that the car vent, um, like like this one, that's like next to the wheel on this side in my CRV was, um, was weakened. <laughs> didn't always stay up, so glad they didn't notice that. Um, but it's nice to have it on the screen. I have all the controls, so I don't have to anything I also have voice control so I can just say I don't have to touch the screen or anything and that's really wonderful to be hands-off completely opposed to a car mount where it's like I have to still you can kind of use your voice but you know to move through things it's just it's a mess I think another thing I enjoy is this does have ambient lighting so at night when you're driving like everything lights up in this really really nice like mild or like really light blue um, which I love because then it lets you see everything like you know, the cup holders light up all this will light up the USB ports which you can't really see super well well we kind of can right here these will actually light up in blue so you can see where the ports are it is so wonderful all the buttons on the steering wheel also light up which is awesome all these will light up in blue this lights in blue like anything important um, when driving at night that you might need to access button wise or function wise lights up in blue even my um, engine button my uh, push start button that also lights up in blue just it's wonderful to be able to see everything so easily another thing I really like is the in the cup holders and I believe in the armrest make one second I'm trying to do it it's really difficult when you're doing it one-handed here hold on there we go is that they have liners so the liners can come out and you can just wipe them down and stuff which is really good because my CRV stuff constantly would get stuck to the plastic and the cup holder and it just wouldn't come off or get stuck on and you couldn't clean it very well also it's a really weird ship ship <laughs> shape meanwhile these my water bottle fits all the way like it fits perfectly this is a pretty thick water bottle for the most part but it fits all the way there's also little latchy boys to help accommodate smaller ones to help keep them in place so that's like really nice i appreciate that because i feel like a lot of car managers don't think about basic things like a cup holder a lot of people need cup holders so it's nice to have ones that fit actual bottles um, i enjoy having all these usb ports and outlets so i have an actual household outlet i think it's only like 110 watts which funny enough is enough to charge my macbook so if i go somewhere and i'm traveling which i do want to do once um you know the pandemic is more under control and it's a little safer to be going doing things but you know if i want to go camping i can bring my macbook and i can plug it into my car and it can charge in my car i also have six usb ports i have two up front two in the armrest and two in the back and it's actually a split of USB-C and then USB-A. So there's three USB-C, three USB-A, all three can charge. Um, I do believe only the two in the front though, like the ones I showed you earlier. So these ones over here connect to the car play. I don't believe the ones in the armrest connect and obviously the ones in the back don't, at least I don't think. They could maybe, I don't think they do. I feel like that might mess with some stuff, but 
I mean, if someone really wanted to, they could probably just get a long cord and plug it into the back if they wanted to be the one to control the music while you know, everyone's driving. Um, trying to think, is there anything else that's positive, like that I feel is like makes this car really cool? I don't know, I think that's kind of standard. I mean, I do enjoy that the back, the glass opens up or the door, which is great if you're um, hauling things, because sometimes you, you get a bit more space to have it stick out a window. You know, if you're maybe carrying lumber from the hardware store or something, I don't know. My dad does that. He he actually has asked me that if he has to go to the store, if I could drive him so he can use the window to put wood out, because he um, is in the process of repairing my parents' bedroom because the roof, um, like my parents' house, it's a two-story house, but the second story is actually an apartment. However, the master bedroom doesn't have a second story above it. It's just a flat roof. And it finally gave out after decades. Like it, it was time to replace it. It leaked, so he had to fix the roof. But he had to fix like the beams in the roof a little bit because some of them got water damaged, but that was an easy fix. And then he had to get like um, new flooring because that all got ruined. Um, also, my mom just wanted new flooring anyway, so in a way, she's like, oh, the, the roof broke? Heck yeah. So he, it, like, flooring, like, well, at least, like, floor panels, they're kind of long. They don't always fit in cars super easily, so. So he's excited to abuse me for rides. Um, oh, there is, I have a power lift gate. I've never had power lift gate, like, or an automatic, I guess. Power lift gate technically is, like, it can rise on its own. But like I have it on my key fob, I have it on the actual car on the inside. So right here, I don't know why you can see it. If I press this, my back door will open. So I love that. Um, oh, it has, um, I think this is pretty standard for a lot of newer vehicles is like the auto lights. So there's like the literal feature of you, you put it onto auto and it will adjust it while you're driving, which is my Honda had. But this has literal auto lights. Like the lights will turn on automatically every time you start the car and then manually adjust them, you know, automatically adjust them as needed. You can turn it off, but I didn't have that in my Honda and I kind of wish I did because I forget to turn my lights on sometimes. So um, auto lights, I love them because I forget to turn my lights on quite often. There were times when I drove no lights on. I don't know how I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> Got lucky. What else? What else is like good about this vehicle that I truly love and feel like it's important to say? Like it's hard, like this is brand new. So it's lots of safety features. Like I have pre-collision, um, like in the front I have like the back collision sensor. So basically if someone gets too close in the front or back or I get too close to someone in the back or front, it will alert me um, and it can potentially put the brakes on in an attempt to stop a potential collision if I'm not quick enough. But you know, that only has so much reaction time. Um, I have the lane keep, I have auto, I have the adaptive cruise control, I'm pretty sure. Like I have so many things I haven't touched yet. So we working on that but it's like just, I have a lot of features. It's crazy, I'm not used to all these things. It's like, it's just like, you know, a week ago I had a CD player still and now I have like Apple CarPlay. You know, it's it's a big one. Okay, hold on, I'm like trying to focus on my water bottle because my arm hurts because it's tired from holding this camera. Um, negatives, there are definitely some cons. Um, I haven't, I the seats while they're comfortable, I haven't been able to get myself figuring out how I want the seats to be, I guess you could say. Um, like my back still hurts a little bit after driving. So I'm trying to figure out the seat placement. The good thing is the Outer Banks while I have has power seats for driver and for passenger, which is great. So you can adjust yourself. Uh, mine has more, um, cause passenger is just like uh, forward, backwards, and then lumbar support. While mine is forward, backwards, I have tilting and lumbar support, all that jazz. Okay, the car behind me is leaving now. We love that. Anyways, what else? Um, Cause there's always negatives. Oh, this is a thing that I've noticed a lot from car videos. When I, I watch detailing videos a lot, to be honest, and I've noticed this a lot in the videos for Fords is that the carpets get a lot of, you know, ill will towards them. Cause they're not that great everything sticks to them. Like I have the regular carpets, like the regular floor carpets. And while they look nice, everything sticks to them, everything. Um, and these didn't like, I do live in New England. So 
we have winter obviously and a lot of cars at this trim level typically get ordered with all season mats however only my back has all season has the, the the season mat so i have like the cargo mat and then i have the seat covers which i need to put on i actually took one of them off to show what it looked like off no, I gotta snap it back on. But this, but it's just regular carpet, and I hate it. So I did order some all season mats, which are the high wall, like the OEM ones are high wall, which is great. One pro I will say is that the footrest on the driver's side, it's all like rubberized, like plasticky and stuff. Like it's not carpet. My Honda had carpet there with just little rubber tracks. Girl, why are you putting carpet? on a footrest it's like that's where all the dirt and salt and snow and mud all collects there and it's really hard to clean because then there's rubber in between like spots of carpet like ugh but at least they have the footrest coolly covered and then once I get the um the mats in it'll be better because I use all season mats literally all season I, I don't ever take them out because they're easy to clean just keeps the car looking better. And also I'm just, I had one vehicle, I think it was my RSX, my Acura RSX, where I didn't have all season mats and like it got so gunked up, it was disgusting. Um, like there were some spots where like I pulled the carpet up and there was like rust underneath because so much water just never dried out. So never ever again will I do carpet as long as I have the ability to not do. <laughs> um, what are some other negatives? Cause it's like, I don't want to be like a negative Nancy, but like there are negatives to this vehicle. I guess it's like, it's definitely underpowered first off. Cause it's meant to be like a competitor. I would say compared to like the Honda CRV, like the compact SUV class. So it's not like super powerful, but it does pretty well at speeding up in a quick moment. Like last night, I just kind of drove around and I went from 40 to 70 in like two seconds. It was crazy but you feel it. Like it has a turbocharge engine, I believe, so it can give you a boost, but it's definitely not meant to be racing down the street, obviously. Um, I think another thing, which this is just a preference, is that I don't like that um, the fuel door, like the fuel intake doesn't have a cap. It just has like a little um, I don't know what to call it, but it's like a flap almost. So like, you push the flap in and it's like you have to position it just right so it fills correctly. And I'd rather just have the cap where I can just put the nozzle in and not worry about trying to position it just right. That's just a personal gripe because it's just weird to me. I've never had a vehicle like that. But it's nice not to have to worry about a cap and like having to hit the side of your car or trying to hook it into the little catch that most cars have for it. It's, so it's like a pro and a con at the same time. Um, ooh, shaky, shaky. I think another one is that, this is just for the overall Bronco Sport line, is that the base model and then the second trim, which is the Big Ben, don't really have a lot of special features. Like, they don't get heated seats by default. They don't get, one of them doesn't get a push start. I think the base model doesn't have a push start button. Or maybe, it, no, actually, I think they all, no, the no, the base model does have push start. It doesn't have like the security code. Like I have the security code lock on my outside door, which is introduced with the Big Ben, which is where you can like, you know, just open the door with a, a passcode that you can use the pre-program one or program your own. You can also open your trunk door um, or the glass, depends what you, I guess like you have a five digit code and then you have like a number system afterwards that tells you if you like just open the driver's side or the passenger side or, you know, it's weird. I haven't tried it yet but you have a time limit. It's like three seconds per number. So you gotta be quick. The goal is so you can like leave your keys in the car when you go hiking or something and then, you know, get in with a passcode. But I also have like, um, there is an app, the Ford Connect app, which you can use as well that can let you unlock the car. Um, because of the Outer Banks model, I do remote start. So I can do that through the key fob. I can do it through the Connect app, which it has pretty good distance. And it works pretty well. Um, you can unlock, you can remote start, you can check your mileage, uh, you can check your gas tank, like how much fuel you have. You can check, if you allow it, you can track where you're driving. So you can see where you've driven, on what day, how far you went. Um, you can schedule like maintenance and all that jazz. Um, oh, there's a Wi Fi option. You can pay for internet. Um, I believe at and is the provider in my particular case where you can turn your car into a hotspot, pay for monthly data and all that jazz. I'm not going to do that because I don't 
know when I would use that because I could use my phone hotspot. But that's kind of cool. I think it's a 28 foot range from the car. So, I mean, that's good. I guess you want to go camping and have internet. But I mean, it's like, if your phone doesn't have it, your car probably won't either, you know? But there aren't like a whole lot of negatives to me right now. I do want to do like a full review um, after I've driven it for like an actual while, maybe after winter or something, like a couple months down the line. As I said, I'm not a car person, so it's more a perspective of someone who's just driving to drive it. Got a new car, wants to talk about it. Um, oh, it has auto start, auto stop start, where I think it turns the engine off when you've like stopped long enough, and then turns it back on to like save gas and all that jazz, which it's like what ofs. Sorry, I'm like I'm sporadic. Let me just look at number of things. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should have made a list. But like, this is truly what a first impression should be: is you talking about it for the first time without really preparing it shouldn't be prepared i feel like but yeah i'm gonna go for a drive because it's a beautiful fall day it's like 45 degrees out but sunny um and i have a new car i'm enjoying the drive um yeah so i'm gonna leave it off here and uh i will see you guys in the next video see ya